All right, let's get started. Um, so we've been talking about stress, and last time we talked about uh, stresses in the earth and what we need to completely characterize the stresses of the earth. So we need the three principal stresses and one of the horizontal directions. Right? If we know those things, then we sort of have a full picture of the stress field. And the reason we only need one of the horizontal directions is because the vertical direction is always a principal stress. Right? The vertical direction is always a principal stress. And of course, the magnitude of that, the vertical stress itself, uh, is one that we can get a good estimate of. Right, by integrating density logs or looking at um, uh, uh, even just, just a pure estimate using rules of thumb, we can get pretty close. We'll talk about those today. But um, if we're giving, given uh, the three, the magnitude of the principal stresses, then it's common to use this type of Anderson fault classification to order them. Now, this is, uh, this is uh, something that's brought over from structural geology, I guess, into petroleum engineering. Um, I don't really like this classification. And the reason I don't like it um, is because later, you know, next week, not that much later, but, but next week, we're going to be able to actually compute the stresses on faults. We're going to resolve the stress field directly on a fault. We're going to be able to compute what the stress is on a fault and determine if that fault is going to slip or not. And so as an engineer, uh, I don't need some arbitrary like classification that I need to memorize when I can actually compute something. Right? So uh, I'm sure I'll get this question over and over again, but um, I, I just want you to understand, I'm, I'm sure I'll get the question later when we l we're actually computing the faults that you're going to say something or like, well, the the faults I computed don't correspond to the Anderson classification exactly. So don't worry about that. The reason that we have to cover this, and you have to memorize it, is because it's ubiquitous in literature. People will, uh, you'll be reading a paper one day, an SPE paper, uh, and, one, and they'll just, in passing in the sentence, say, it was a normal faulting regime. They won't even say it was a, Andersonian or Anderson normal faulting regime. They'll just say it was a normal faulting regime, and you have to know that that means that the vertical stress is the greatest of the three. Okay? So, again, the reason we have to cover this is because, and you have to memorize it, which means it probably be on a test, um, is so that in the literature you can, you can understand what they're saying. When they, when they say it's a reverse faulting regime, it's a normal faulting regime. And the reason they come is because this ordering of the principal stresses would most naturally accommodate this type of faulting. So in a normal faulting regime, the hanging wall moves down. Right? And the, the, the type of stress classification, being the vertical stress greater than the horizontal stresses, would accommodate this type of fault. Right? If, the, if the vertical stress is the greatest, that's going to accommodate the hanging wall motion moving down. And of course, the horizontal stresses, you always order just by their definition, right? Th there would never be a case where SH min is greater than SH max. It doesn't make sense by definition. Right? So really what you have to remember is the location of the vertical stress. And honestly, to memorize this, all you have to do is memorize the first one, right? Normal faulting, the vertical stress is the greatest. Then you just fill in the horizontal stresses in terms of the way their names imply, max and min, follow, right? Well, if you memorize that, then reverse faulting is easy because it's just the reverse, the opposite, right? So in a reverse faulting regime, the vertical stress is the lowest. It's the opposite of normal, right? And of course, this also accommodates this type of fault motion. And so if the two horizontal stresses are greater than the vertical stress, then the hanging wall is has going to have a tendency to move up. Right? So again, the one you have to memorize is this one. Vertical stress 
is greatest than a normal faulting regime, and then it's easy to remember that reverse is the opposite of that one, right? the lowest, okay? And then there's only one more, and that's strike slip, and, and that's the case where the vertical fault is in the center. And uh, the vertical stress is, is in between the maximum and principal stresses. And this, just to be clear on this picture, I've, I've, you know, I just took, I took a picture from this source, the SGS, and then I added these labels to it. And I guess I didn't draw it very well. I, I probably should have not drawn this blue arrow to be directly vertical, uh, but rather it's, it, it may possibly some kind of incline. Uh, but what I'm implying here is that SH max is in the in the plane of the horizon, right? In the plane of the horizon. It's not necessarily. Um, I, I didn't want to draw it such that it implies that in this type of faulting regime, SH max is directly normal or uh, directly uh, pushing along, causing absolute strike slip conditions. So that again, these these are these are in the plane of the horizon, but it, do, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's it's um, parallel with this black line, which would imply perfect strike slip fault. So anyway, uh, this is Anderson classification, right? So when you're reading a paper. And they said there was a strike slip faulting regime. Your head, your, in your mind, you should say, okay, the, the vertical stress is between the two horizontal stresses. <clears throat> okay? And again, I'll, I'm going to say it one more time because I know somebody's going to ask me this. Next week, we're going to actually compute the real stresses on the fault to determine if a fault will slip or not. And they may not agree with. You know, in the end, the actual motion of the fault may not agree with the Anderson classification. That's okay. The Anderson classification is intended to, um, you know, convey the most likely scenario, but not, it doesn't always work. Okay. So in summary, you have this kind of table, and again, you can just, if you just memorize the first one, the, the other ones kind of follow. <clears throat>